This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Clayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. Another very important show. We're in the midst of the charade, the travesty of a mockery of a sham, of a mockery of a sham, as Woody Allen would put it of the impeachment saga of Donald J. Trump, not benefiting the American people at all, benefiting the cable news networks that carry it. Their ratings are boosted. Their advertising dollars are way up. Uh, I watch all stations just briefly, and then I turn it off. I go do work, or I watch the Golf Channel or the Tennis Channel, which is owned by Sinclair. We have Cheryl Atkinson on later. She has a show called Full Measure on Sinclair. It's much more powerful in terms of reaching people than even Fox News, 178 stations throughout the United States, local stations, and sports networks. They bought Fox's sports networks, by and large. So we need to get the word out here, because what we are seeing right now is reality TV, and it's boring reality TV. And people don't even know what it's about. And in terms of the politicians that you see that are orchestrating this impeachment on both sides, but let's just talk about the Democrats right now. It's the equivalent of political masturbation. Let me repeat that. And I don't mean this in a vulgar way, but that's what it is. Political masturbation, because that's how low class it is. That's how disgusting it is. And you see it over and over and over again, making the same points. You've got Adam Schiff the congressman from West Hollywood. You've got Nadler, Gerald Nadler, a despicable human being. You've got these others out there, and they're just dripping venom and hatred towards the president of the United States. And what's it all about? It's about weakening the president enough that he doesn't get elected in 2020. And that formula actually worked. I didn't do it for that reason, but I played a role in impeaching Bill Clinton. I wanted to see him indicted, but as a fallback, at least I thought maybe there might be some justice there. I didn't do it to influence the election, but it did influence the election because it created such an odor and such a stench with regard to Clinton and with regard to his vice president, Al Gore, who helped him cover up not just the Lewinsky scandal, but 39 other scandals that it tipped the balance slightly where someone who was completely unqualified to be president, someone who was intellectually bereft and frankly spent more time working out in White House gyms than doing anything else, George W. Bush became president. We know what happened after that. It was a disaster almost as big as Obama or almost as big as Lyndon Johnson or others before them. Jimmy Carter. We wound up in a war killing a lot of people for no reason, uh, you know, because he had a, a vendetta against Saddam Hussein. I mean, it'd be great if Saddam Hussein was alive today. At least he was a buffer to the radical Shiites in Iran. He was a Sunni, obviously. And to keep Iran and Iraq fighting, frankly, would have been good. Let them kill each other for that matter. You know, because frankly, if they keep themselves occupied, they can't go after us or go after the Europeans or go after Israel or whatever. So this is what we got. And right now we are enmeshed in this impeachment charade, a mockery of a travesty of a sham of a mockery of a sham at the same time that there are serious crises going around in the world. And our, the, our eye is being taken off the ball. The president's eye is being taken off the ball. Of course, Congress never has its eye on the ball, so that really doesn't matter. But, you know, you've got North Korea, you've got Iran. Just a few days ago, a legislator in Iran called for the assassination of President Trump. Now, I'll tell you, <clears throat> I mean, it's time to take that regime out. Take it out totally, take out its military capability. And you get a coalition of the United States, Saudi Arabia, Israel, maybe even some European countries to join. But the president can't do that because he's preoccupied with what's going on. In fact, they don't let him do anything. He can't even take out a terrorist leader like Soleimani. 
of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. So this is the problem that we have. And who is sitting on top of this impeachment trial as kind of like the referee under our, our so-called Constitution? I love our Constitution, but the way it's things are today, it doesn't even exist because it's simply ignored by both political parties and judges. John Roberts, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, someone who witnessed the Democrats viciously attacking the Republican lawyers the other day, and because he's frightened of the deep state and the material that they have on him, the dirt they've dug on him, there are issues about his lifestyle. I don't think he wants it out. That generation does not want it out. There may be other things. That Why did he flip on Obamacare at the 12th hour? Ask yourself that question. What does the intelligence deep state have on him that they have on a lot of people? You can see how they violated the privacy of the president. They violated my privacy with my clients. I got two preliminary injunctions. We're going to talk about that with Cheryl Atkinson. But he then admonishes both sides. Are you kidding me? Who are you? You're chief justice of the Supreme Court, and you got to play patty cakes with both sides? This guy's an absolute disgrace as chief justice. The Supreme Court is actually more politicized than even the lower federal courts. And how did they get confirmed? Because they have to toe the line. They have to decide almost from birth if they want to be a Supreme Court justice. So they're not going to get there. So they have to do everything right the way the establishment wants. And this is the problem that we have today with the federal judges at the lower level, with Supreme Court justices. They are, by and large, political hacks. They have been put in there through political patronage. We need a constitutional amendment. We need to take away their lifetime tenure. We need to take away their immunity. Make them accountable for what they do. We need a new way of selecting them. And sometime this year, we're going to have a Third Continental Congress where we suggest changes to the Constitution. We do need to change it. Our founding fathers were enlightened by God, as I've said many times, but they weren't God. And they made some errors. And this was the biggest error. Because without federal judges that can put an end to the charade of the impeachment, or even administer it properly and fairly, as John Roberts has not done so far in this proceeding, I'll tell you something, if it comes down to one vote deciding whether Trump should be convicted, Roberts will side with the Democrats on that. Undoubtedly, he's a closet liberal. He may be closet something else for all I know. And I'm not a homophobe. I have gay people in my family. But that's not the issue. The issue is, are you blackmailed because you don't want it out? So this is the problem that we have today. And it's why people don't rise up because they're afraid. We live in an Orwellian state, as Judge Richard Leon said, and even he bailed out after I got two preliminary injunctions in front of his court. He bailed out. I asked him if he had any contact with the intelligence agencies behind my back. He wouldn't answer that question. And I had information that the intelligence agencies had stuff on him from a whistleblower. So this is the world we live in today, and we're forced to endure this on television and in radio and every place else. And it's time that the American people rise up. Rise up by joining our Justice League at Freedom Watch. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. Join our Justice League. Support our cause. Engage in citizen justice, peacefully and legal, with our citizens' grand juries, with our hard-hitting cases, which some of them succeed. So this is something that we need to really focus on right now. And, you know, I take my hat off, and I'm going to talk about this uh, in this segment and in the next segment. But Tulsi Gabbard today, a Democrat, sued Hillary Clinton, it was actually yesterday, for defaming her, calling her a Russian agent. You know, I take my hat out to Tulsi Gabbard. I wish she was more ideologically inclined with me. You know, I would support her in other ways, personally. But this is something that needs to be done. The president could have stopped this impeachment trial if he had pushed back. He had lawyers that always played it safe, that were afraid of their shadow. He could have sued the Intel Deep State. He could have sued uh, Mueller as we did for Jerry Corsi, which kept Jerry Corsi for getting, from getting indicted when they tried to turn him to testify against the president by asking him to perjure himself. And people need to not be afraid despite this deep state. Our founding fathers, you know, pledged their fortunes, their sacred honor, and risked their lives to form a new nation. We, the American people, need to rise up because you see this clown show on Capitol Hill? It's not a benign clown show. It's a cancerous clown show. These people are disgusting, and they're corrupt, and they're compromised on both sides of the aisle. Mitch McConnell doesn't deserve any credit. All he's trying to do is preserve control, Republican control of the White House. That's it. The whole thing is a sham. It should never even have gone forward. And if Lindsey Graham, who also has skeletons in his closet, had 
subpoenaed Hunter Biden and Joe Biden before his Judiciary Committee a long time ago, the Democrats would have run for the exits. They wouldn't even be here today. So this is why you need to support judicial. Uh, <laughs> it's a Freudian slip because I do today at Freedom Watch what I used to do at Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch just gets documents. That doesn't do anything. Got to use the documents. I'm bringing hard hitting cases at Freedom Watch. Citizens Grand Jury support us. Go and join our Justice League at Freedom Watch USA dot org. Freedom Watch USA dot org. Support Clive and Bundy who's fighting for you against government tyranny. Go to Clive and Bundy Defense Fund. Dot .org I'm representing him privately in that respect. There's an appeal, an oral argument coming up in Las Vegas, Nevada on March 23rd. The Trump Justice Department, which the president doesn't even control, the deep state controls it, is trying to throw Cliven in prison after he's had his indictment dismissed by having that indictment dismissal overturned. Support Jerry Corsi at CorsiLegalDefenseFund.com who's still fighting for you in the courts against Mueller. He brought a case for prosecutorial abuse, for malicious prosecution, for violating his privacy rights. Support him. Of course, the Legal Defense Fund dot com. And of course, our other valiant clients. And I'm going to talk about one of them in the next segment. But I got to take my hat out, hat off to Tulsi Gabbard, because she actually stuck her neck out here. And you can imagine what the Clintons are going to try to do to her. She better get a bodyguard at this point. Eighty people died during their administration. It wasn't law of averages when 80 people died. And of course, Jeffrey Epstein recently, she and Bill Clinton continue to be the number one suspects. They had the most to lose. Bill had visited, I believe, 23 times to Fantasy Island with Epstein, been on his plane, obviously partook, you know, of the female trafficking that was going on there, to put it nicely. It's much worse than that. So this is what we're up against. So again, I know I'm pumping it, but we need your support. We're the mouse that roared. I don't have $110 million in net assets like Judicial Watch does for Freedom Watch. Contribute to our cause. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. Freedomwatchusa.org. We're actually doing something. I'll be right back with the next segment of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Special Prosecutor, Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Now I want to talk about another judicial outrage. You know, I'm, I'm writing my next book. And for anybody listening, don't steal my title or you will be sued. It's copywritten. It's called It Takes a Revolution. It's a playoff of Hillary Clinton's It Takes a Village. Okay, it takes a revolution. Forget the scandal industry. Forget Fox News. Forget CNN. Forget MSNBC, forget the whole lot of them that are just profiting for themselves, that promise things every day on both sides of the aisle to boost ratings with their viewers. But in fact, those things are never delivered. They're never delivered because of the state that we're in today in the country. And who are our greatest protectors in principle? In principle, as the French say, en principe, that's the federal judges in terms of our Constitution and in terms of our rule of law. But as I said in the earlier segment, as I've said before, by and large, there are some exceptions. There are a bunch of political hacks when it comes to a case that has some tinge of government or politics in it. They scratch the backs of the establishment or they react in a way personally to cases uh, because they think they can get away with it because they have life tenure, because they're never impeached and because they're not held accountable. They have immunity from their decisions. So they believe. Actually, they don't. But no other judge is going to enforce a case against a fellow judge when you sue that judge for violating his oath of office or committing other illegal acts. Just ain't going to happen. So let me give you the latest outrage. And I'm going to go through all of this in my book, not just with regard to the federal judiciary, but also with regard to the other branches of government who have completely abdicated their responsibilities to protect we, the people. I represent a very brave uh, person, African American policeman in Dallas, Texas. He was unfortunately victimized during the massacre that occurred two and a half years ago that was done by a disciple of that vehement anti Semite, anti white, anti Christian, black Muslim, Louis Farrakhan. The violence was also incited against the police in Dallas by Black Lives Matter, by the new Black Panthers Party, and by others. Dimitrik put his foot forward. 
a brave guy you would not believe. And he sued Farrakhan. He sued Black Lives Matter. He sued the New Black Panthers Party, Sharpton and others, Jesse Jackson. And what did he get for that? The case was assigned to an African-American judge by the name of Sam Lindsay, who came up with a flimsy reason to dismiss the case without prejudice. He didn't want it in his courtroom. He probably felt he was at risk. You know, he could be attacked, particularly since he was African-American. Or maybe he didn't like the fact that Demetric Penny, a fellow African-American, brought a case against radical African-Americans like Farrakhan and Sharpton and others. Who knows? But this is the world we live in. No courage by these judges. And the judge exited stage left. Now, I filed another case for uh, the father of one of the policemen that was killed, Enrique Zamaripa. And his son was killed in that raid. That was assigned to a Trump, Trump judge. Well, she didn't want that case either. She was a female. You know, I don't want to be at risk. I don't want to stick my neck out. So let's get rid of that case, too. Now, that's on appeal. Now, fast forward, Dimitrik brought a, brought a case against the Dallas Morning News, which attacked him because he attacked, you know, Black Lives Matter, it's very leftist paper, and smeared him, said that he was misusing his public interest group, the Dallas Fallen Officers Foundation, which helps raise money for victims of, you know, what happened during that massacre and otherwise. This is Judge Ada Brown, also African-American. Now, I've been practicing in Dallas, Texas for many years. I'm licensed in the Northern District of Texas. I, I'm in that court. And I never had to have a local counsel. And Demetri can't afford a local counsel. He's a policeman. He's running for Congress now as well. And so this judge comes in and says, Mr. Clayman, you can't represent Demetri unless you have a local counsel. Then we say, OK, we need time to get a local counsel. See, we can find somebody that'll do it pro bono. She won't give us time to do that. So this is what we're up against. You know, and 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 Demetric has been called all kinds of names, Uncle Tom, a house N, a traitor. His life has been threatened. His family life was threatened. And no judge will stand up for him and will hold these people accountable. So the latest judge on the cavalcade of compromised dishonesty is Judge Ada Brown of the Northern District of Texas. And I see this every single day. Sometimes we break through. Sometimes we get a good judge. I'll be filing more cases in state court in Florida and elsewhere because at least state court judges are accountable to the people for re-election. Federal judges are above the law because they have life tenure and they think they can do whatever they want. Dismiss cases because they don't consider it plausible or they don't like it. And without them to protect us, we are left defenseless and we're going into a revolution, I pray, peaceful and legal. Be right back. And now, four words that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can... Uh... Find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor, Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. I'm back with Cheryl Atkinson, the star of Full Measure on Sinclair Television, a great network. With They own about 178 stations throughout the United States. They own most of the sports networks, which they purchased from Fox, interestingly enough. It's a network which allows you to say what you think and what you think should happen with regard to this country. So I really appreciate Sinclair. I appreciate Cheryl. Uh, and, of course, uh, we need more conservative voices out there, libertarian voices, other voices, uh, because there's a monopoly in terms of cable news. And it's interesting because Sinclair in one major market has more viewers in one day than Fox News would have even in a month. I mean, that's the reach of Sinclair. So I welcome Cheryl Atkinson. Uh, in my view, she's a tremendous patriot. She's gone through her own trials and tribulations, previously been with C CBS. She was illegally surveilled by the government intel deep state. She's been fighting that. I would like her to give us an update on what's happening in that regard and her observations on what's going on with this impeachment charade. And, and that's exactly what it is whether you're Democrat, Republican, or independent. I mean, I don't think anybody disputes that notion. So, Cheryl, welcome to Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. Tell us about your show at Sinclair, 
and how you've been fighting to uncover what happened to you with regard to illegal surveillance and how it, it harmed you. Well, a lot of people may not know that Sinclair owns the stations where Full Measure airs. My program is on Sundays, Full Measure. And I've had greater freedom than I've ever had in my professional career to pursue any story in any fashion, which grew more and more difficult at CBS, especially those last couple of years before I quit, because news narratives are so carefully shaped now by managers who don't want you to interview certain people or demand that the interviewees literally say certain things or they won't use them or that a story comes out a certain way. And when you tell them the facts don't support that, here's what's really happening. They don't want the story. That doesn't happen um, with me at Sinclair on Full Measure. So you will just see a lot of good old-fashioned reporting without – we'll hear all kinds of views, even views that are considered, for whatever reason, views you shouldn't hear about anymore. But you'll hear all sides, and you'll hear underreported stories that were very common five, ten years ago, but you just don't hear anymore. And, uh, yeah, I hope people will tune in. And you can watch replays at fullmeasure.news if you're interested in seeing what – the types of stories we have are. Well, that's great. As I said, Sinclair owns about 178 or 180 stations throughout the United States because under FEC regulations, the major networks cannot control more than 30 percent of local networks. And it's a huge reach because you're reaching the average person, not just you know the couch potatoes left and right who, who watch these shows every night who already have their opinions formed. And I believe, Cheryl, that the only way this country is going to change. It's not going to happen so much in the courts anymore because these federal judges are very politicized and you know they have to pay back the people that got them in power largely. But it's to change the way the people think, to change our values, our ethics, our morals. And that, so what you're doing is so important. Now, tell me uh, what has been happening in your lawsuit with regard to the illegal surveillance by the intelligence agencies that uh, destroyed your relationship with CBS. Well, to bring you up to speed, we had the forensics we've had for years from five different forensics exams. CBS confirmed and announced some years ago that my computers had been remotely intruded upon, and we know it was government software. Anyway, none of that's in dispute, but when it comes to actually getting justice from the government, since the Department of Justice was involved and they will not investigate themselves or hold themselves accountable, we sued. And the case got thrown out after six years. When the judge ultimately said, well, after six years, you ought to have the names of the agents who had access to the government software they used against you. We were suing John Doe's. And we argued, how could we have the names when the Department of Justice refused to give us a single piece of paper in discovery? In other words, we had no way to get the names or to know who the people are who access this equipment. Well, long story short, we did some detective work, and now we have a former federal agent who's confessed to being part of the surveillance against me. And here's what's important, Larry. It's not just me. He says, and we always knew or assumed and knew from sources, they were doing this to hundreds of innocent Americans, U.S. citizens and people, I'm sure other journalists as well. So that's why this whole thing mattered. And he gave some detail about the operation being run out of the Baltimore U.S. Attorney's Office under Rod Rosenstein at the time. And we have names of some of the other federal agents who were involved. So we're now suing those names. We have to see if the judge will let us move forward because Department of Justice, we expect, will still fight using taxpayer money, um, will still fight the case. So even if you have someone in handcuffs bringing themselves to the court saying, I did it, in our justice system today, that doesn't matter if the court won't let the case move forward or if Department of Justice doesn't want to have accountability. Cheryl, who's the judge and which president nominated that judge? The judge is Judge Brinkema in the Eastern District of Virginia. Um, I don't know. I really don't know who nominated her. You know, she's, okay, what she year, a, I don't know what year she came in. I don't know any of that. Sorry. It almost doesn't matter because Democrat or Republican, they cover for the intelligence agencies. I believe they're afraid of it. And not just it, it's the NSA, it's the CIA, it's the FBI. And here's the experience that I had, and, and you know, because we've talked about it, is that I got two preliminary injunctions against the Obama intel agencies going back to 2014, early 2015. I also sued in my individual capacity. I'm a lawyer. They were intercepting my communications, which are attorney-client with, with my clients, which is illegal. And 
consequently, it's not just that we got these injunctions, which gave rise to the USA Freedom Act, and the government comes in, our so-called government at the Justice Department says, well, now we have this law, so we don't need any. Mr. Clayman, it doesn't need to proceed anymore. And that is exactly what the judge did. He folded. And I had represented a whistleblower who said that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, that even the judge on the case, Judge Richard Leon, had been surveilled among other judges, among prominent people, among critics, you know, left and right of the government. And he just exited stage left. And I asked him, I said, Your Honor, did you have any ex parte communications with the defendants, with the intelligence agencies? Meaning that did he do it without my knowing about it, you know, on telephone calls or whatever? He would not answer the question. And hmm. I asked him more than once. And and that's the problem is that these judges are afraid. And this, this leads to our, our lead in here that we talked a little bit about before the show, Cheryl, is that it's mutual assured destruction in Washington. This deep state has stuff on everybody. On a lot of people, it has dirt. You see the chief justice of the Supreme Court, John Roberts, who flipped on Obamacare at the 12th hour. Ask why. What, if anything, did they have on him? What kind of leverage did the Obama administration have to get him to flip? Then, during this impeachment trial, this is what I want to talk about now, you see that the Democrats get up there, impeachment managers, and are very rude, insulting, and aggressive and hostile towards the Republicans. Now, Republicans aren't blameless either, but not in this instance. They were just playing it straight. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court admonishes both sides. He didn't need to admonish both sides, but see, he's afraid. And he's afraid, in my view, of this deep state that can destroy him. And there are a lot of rumors about the Chief Justice. We're not going to get into it here in terms of his lifestyle and everything. And, and I just wonder whether that kind of thing has been influencing judges, uh, Supreme Court justices, and others in this country for a long time. Well, let me be sure to separate myself from your theories, although I think that's certainly a valid theory. You know, as a news reporter, I can't say any of that is happening or that I know that's happening. But I will tell you that my sources inside the intelligence community, as well as the agent who conducted surveillance against me, um, have acknowledged and stated that they look for dirt, that they conduct these illegal operations. And part of the reason is not just to see what's going on, but that they are actually sometimes looking for dirt and, according to the sources, planting dirt in some cases when none is to be found. So it, it's very chilling. I, I hear a lot of people say things like, well, the government can spy on me. I'm not doing anything wrong. Like, I don't care if they look at my stuff. That's assuming the purest of motives on the part of anybody who's doing this. And if they're looking in your computer illegally, their motives probably aren't pure. And you have to wonder what else someone who doesn't agree with you or you may not agree with, what else they might do to you um, in order to make it look look a certain way or to keep you quiet or to intimidate you or who knows what. But I, I think it's well, they, far more insidious can, than some people think. Oh, and they can plant stuff, you see, and that's the thing. When I used to travel to South America for Peter Paul, a client who had the goods on Hillary with illegal campaign contributions, instead the Justice Department under Obama had him locked up and indicted for alleged securities fraud. You know, I would never check my bags in. You know, I was worried that they could plant some kind of drugs in, in my bags on an airplane or whatever. And, you know, they, they don't want people that will challenge them like you did, you know, at CBS and now. And that's the problem. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have change. And that's why these congressmen, they just go, you know, with their, their act, you know, on Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, now the impeachment proceedings, which is a reality show. But nothing ever happens. Nothing happens. And I believe this impeachment is basically they know it's it probably is going not to succeed in terms of conviction. So it's to weaken the president going into the 2020 elections. They can now say he was impeached and he covered up the facts. Do you have any thoughts on that? I do. I mean, I think that, you know, it's hard to know what would happen if this the impeachment had not occurred. But it appears to me as an outsider that if anything, it perhaps has collated um, made more cohesive, I should say, President Trump's support, and that he has emerged from all of these controversies, it seems to me, stronger than before. So if I were a Democrat looking for a strategy to use against Trump, I might say after three years, wow, everything we've done has backfired. And do I really want to set off, you know, Trump supporters and give them a, a cause to come out and vote and to really stand behind? Do I really want to do that? 
moving into this 2020 election. It seems to me that's exactly what they're doing. Um, I could you know, be that, wrong, but I just feel like both sides are entrenched. And if anything, Trump's folks are becoming very motivated. You may be right, uh, Cheryl. And I, I think that that's probably the conventional wisdom here. And, and I may agree with it. But there's also another wild card here. I know that when you know, I helped trigger the Clinton impeachment with Bob Barr and Dave Shippers back in the late 90s, leading up to 2000 elections, it did weaken Gore to the point. I didn't do it for that reason. I did it for justice. But it weakened Gore to the point that George W. Bush, who certainly, in my view, was not qualified to be the president of the United States, ultimately wound up being elected by a hair. And they see that model, you see, and that's what they're using. And there is the that 20 percent. The, the, the difference is, I think, Larry, people understood what the Clinton impeachment was about. I don't think anybody understands except the few people and, you know, the people in D.C. and L.A. and the news people. And even some of them don't understand what this is about. And I'm constantly asked that by acquaintances who follow politics moderately and don't have any idea what they're talking about and tune out when I try to explain what both sides are thinking. I can see on their face they're thinking, never mind, I'm sorry I asked. Well, that's a good point, uh, because I think it maybe rebuts the point I was about to make, is that the 20 percent that are independents in the middle are the ones that are going to decide the election. You know, Trump can co coalesce his supporters, and I don't tell people who to vote for, but you know, I can say who I voted for. I voted for him, and I'm proud to do it again. But the reality is, is that these 20 percent in the middle are the ones that are going to swing the next election. And that is the wild card. And I hope that you're right, certainly, in that regard. But what we have right now, getting back to our earlier discussion, is what Judge Richard Leon initially said before I believe he, that he became compromised in our case, is a almost Orwellian state where Big Brother is watching you. And the intelligence agencies have the ability as well as the FBI and other government agencies to turn on your smart TV, listen to you, watch you. They know where you are at all times through your cell phones. Uh, the uh, social media companies have the same technology that the government intel agencies have. In fact, that's how the government got the technology from, from them, from Silicon Valley. Uh, and of course, you have foreign adversaries who have that same ability, uh, particularly since a lot of our cell phones and, and other things, TVs, they're made in China, they're made in Korea, they're made elsewhere. So there is no privacy anymore. And that is a very inhibiting factor to people trying to change things in this country for the better. And that is what we're up against. Final thoughts. <laughs> Side note, you know, the forensics showed, and apparently this is common knowledge among Intel folks who know it, I didn't know, when you talk about how they can listen in, I had Skype on my computer, and it turns out they can activate Skype secretly on your computer and listen into your conversations and use Skype to exfiltrate or to take out files and stuff from your computer. I mean, who would have thought that? There's all kinds of things. You know, they've written code into uh, software and programs that you have that you buy commercially. The intel agencies have code in there that makes it look like it's you know, normal, accepted, non-spyware, so that if you do a spyware scan, it won't show up. It'll say this is this is all good. Anyway, there's a million ways, like you say, they can do that. And I'm afraid that people are kind of accepting now that the government surveils and they're less shocked than they were when this all first started coming up about 10, 15 years ago. I agree with you, Cheryl. I want to thank you. We're out of time. We'll have you back again. And we really appreciate what you're doing uh, on Full Measure of Sinclair and just generally with regard to your activism. Uh, but I want to just basically say that uh, people like Cheryl need to come forward if we're going to save this country. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before he was a trial lawyer, he sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Now for the verdict, federal patriots. I call you federal patriots, fellow patriots, Freudian slip, because the federal government has not behaved 
as patriots, but you have. You are the people that are going to change this country. You are we the people. You're the people that changed it in, 19, in 1776, and we will change it again. And I believe that with God's divine providence, and the founding fathers believed that too, what were the odds of beating Great Britain and forming the new nation? 0.1%? It was because of God. God allowed us to do that. He helped us. He gave us his grace and his support. And we formed a new nation, which was an inspiration for many countries, particularly in the Western world. The French Revolution broke out in 1789. Other revolutions followed. The Founding Fathers did it not just for themselves, but to change the course of history for mankind. And that is why I've been asking so much for the support at freedomwatchusa.org. We need to get bigger. We're very small. We don't have the resources that my former group has. You know, it's very lucrative to get documents, to go on Fox. You have a tremendous reach. But what do you do with the documents? We get documents, too, but then we bring cases, hard-hitting cases and citizens' grand juries. So join our citizens' grand juries. We're going to hold Adam Schiff accountable. We're going to hold Nadler accountable. We're going to hold Maxine Waters accountable. We'll hold them all accountable. We're going to seek their indictments. We're going to try them. We're going to fry them legally and peacefully. We're going to sentence them. And we're going to ask the president to meet out those sentences. And hopefully he'll be reelected by then and can act with great strength, which he hasn't been. He hasn't been strong. Strong is not going on Twitter. Strong is actually filing actions like Tulsi Gabbard did against Hillary Clinton. And doing things like that. And he had the authority to order an investigation into Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. He is the head of the executive branch. He's the head of the Justice Department, technically. So that's the kind of thing that needs to be done and needs to be followed and needs to be coalesced. Now, I want to say I have a, a new show, which I'm doing with some friends when I visit California. I sit down and do that with them. It's called Larry Clayman for Everyone. It's a number four. OK, I want you to tune into that. We're putting it up on our YouTube station. You can find it elsewhere. You can find it on the website American Greatness. Uh, it gives you an insight as to who I am. And I've got great people there with me. Judah Friedman. I've got Ashley Hamilton who's the son of George Hamilton. And, you know, in his own right, he's a very accomplished actor and songwriter and musician and, and other people coming in from Hollywood and the left coast, not the people that you see at Golden Globes. And thank God for Ricky Gervais that, you know, basically cut them a new one uh, about a week and a half ago. But these are people that are conservatives. And we need to use uh, Hollywood. We need to use the media to educate the American people. And that's as important as court cases. Maybe it's more important because in the days leading up to our revolution in 1776, the revolution actually began before that. It began with the writings of the founding fathers, of great historians, of great philosophers, you know, read the Federalist Papers, read uh, Democracy in America that was written by Alexis de Tocqueville after that, you know, analyzing what went on in the days leading up to the American Revolution and its impact throughout the world. You know, we can influence thought and we have to break through. You're not going to get it by watching Fox News. You're not going to get it by watching the other cable networks. You'll get it watching Sinclair. I urge you to do that. Cheryl Atkinson's show, Full Measure, and I'm one with Eric Bowling frequently, his show. Uh, he's no longer with Fox. He's with Sinclair. He can talk freely there. So I want you to do that. And we need your support. We need your strong support, but we need to educate. So go to the Freedom Watch YouTube channel and watch what we do. Go to American Greatness. Listen to this show because I'm giving you insight as to who I am and how I think. You know, I'm kind of a frustrated comedian, so I hope you don't take offense at some of my jokes. Uh, I've done some stand-up comedy in the past even because I, with comedy, you can influence things. And, and watch that Ricky Gervais uh, monologue at the Golden Globes. He's a leftist, but you know what? He stuck it to them because he's an honest leftist. And there are honest leftists out there. Very few, I might add. But there are some. And he's one of them. And I take my hat off to him. Even Christopher Hitchens going way back when, if you remember him, uh, he was very far left. But he was an honest guy. And he couldn't stand what was Clinton was doing. And he was an ally of me at, at Judicial Watch. And may his soul rest in peace. But... This is what we need to do today. We need to rise up and we need to bring justice ourselves peacefully and legally. So go to freedomwatchusa.org, contribute to our cause, join our Justice League, get up off the couch, put the popcorn down, put the beer down, and get to work because if we don't, we're not going to have a country much longer. I'll be back next week with another edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. Until then, God bless you, God bless your family, God protect your family. 
God bless America, and God save America. Thank you for listening. Thank you.